let's talk about thermal scopes real quick. Have you tried putting one of your Pulsar scopes onto an air rifle yet? Yes. And how does it work in the dark? No, exceptionally well. I mean, you know, thermal, say, uh, thermal doesn't, thermal's not night vision, right? So thermal doesn't care what time of day it is. Thermal only cares whether or not there are temper, temperature variances in your field of view or not. And if there are temperature variances out in your field of view, then it's represented on a display and you're going to see. So I see just as well in the daytime with the thermal rifle scope they do at night. If I see a mile in the daytime through a thermal rifle scope, I can be out there in zero light, can't see, the, can't see my hand in front of my face, but I'll be able to see a mile, you know, out across an open crop field. I'll see water towers, I'll see tree lines, I'll see everything. And if there's something out there with the, with the temperature, like a pig, it just absolutely glows, right? Um, so now how do they handle recoil? They handle recoil just fine. I mean, these thermal rifle scopes are rated, uh, recoil rated up to a 375 H&H. So, uh, and they don't have the same type of reticle system as a traditional scope. So if you're talking about an air gun with a spring action and a traditional rifle scope, you may have an issue, right? Um, you know, uh, uh, rifle scopes aren't, necessarily, aren't necessarily fans of air rifle. They definitely don't like recoil going in two different directions. Right. Um, but these are digital rifle scopes. So something like, uh, you know, the, our, the Pulsar thermal rifle scopes for the new Sightmark race and Sightmark just came out with a 2X, which is perfect for air gun with, you know, for air gun enthusiasts because you're shooting closer range and you're dealing with a base magnification of two power instead of four power, right? But even those scopes like the Wraith is full color HD during the daytime, uh, 1080 HD, and then it's digital night vision. You just push a button and you're in digital night vision mode with a range, with de a detection range of, of probably 200 yards, right? You know, more than enough for hunting with an air rifle. So, but um, but both of those, pretty much all these digital optics are going to run just fine out of a um, off of a, an air rifle. Especially if it's PCP, even right? when you're talking about the PCP air rifles, most of today's rifle scopes will stand up to that because their actions are definitely not the same, and recoil impulse is definitely not the same as say spring actions and other types of air gun actions. Mm -hmm. So. People who are running PCP air rifles, I mean, they, they should have a warm and fuzzy about running really any kind of rifle scope they want. Mm -hmm. But for night hunting, um, you can run lights, but thermal and digital night vision, that's where it's at. And I mean, when you look at something like the Wraith, you're talking about $500 digital night vision scope, and you're probably gonna spend a couple hundred, couple few hundred dollars on a scope anyway, right? So why not yeah, just go with something you can use 24 hours? Yeah, if you're, if you're uh, invested in chasing hogs at night, especially if you live in a hog-heavy state. Yeah, especially yeah. hog hunting. Yeah. You're, or you're predators, but... Right, well, that's one of the popular things to do for, for air rifles, especially. Um, so have you noticed, though, for someone, you know, I mean, I've shot your scopes at the range at Poma and some other events, but from a hunting perspective, is there any kind of learning curve that people got to go through uh, when they first start working with, with a, a scope like yours? Uh, the only real learning curve is, well, there's two sides of it, right? Understand the reticle that you're using hmm. uh, and understand the platform that you're using the scope on. So if, well, and there's a third part of that, understand the limitations of both, right? On air guns, it's more important to understand the limitations of, your air rifle than it is to understand the limitations of the scope because you're never going to reach the limitations of the scope with an air rifle. Right. Right. I mean, these are scopes that I, some of these scopes are running out to 2000 yards on my bolt action rifles. Right. And right. you're going to be shooting probably, you know, maybe up to a hundred yards with an air rifle. Right. So um, first you want to be familiar with, with the reticle and how to use the reticle. Um, most cases, you really just need crosshairs if you're shooting closer range, but you really have to be cognizant of, of the drop, right? Your pellet or your, your bullets drop. So if you're shooting a, uh, you show, shooting a slower uh, velocity air rifle, then you have to be, you have to know what your, what your drop is going to be at 25 and 15 and 75 and 100 yards. Um, and apply that to whatever your reference is going to be in the reticle. You have to know those things before you get out there. 
factor. The only other things you really have to worry about is, um, you know, make sure that when, when you're looking at optics, you're looking at air rifles, both have to be purpose driven, mm -hmm. right? You have to decide what caliber uh, air rifle you want to run, and that's going to be based on what you're going to hunt it with, right? So just like I, I, we talked about at the beginning of, of our discussion, if you're hunting hogs, I opt for larger caliber air rifles. I could do it with the 25 caliber, but I prefer the 357, the 45, and the 50 cals, right? And so you have to know that going in, and you also have to have an idea of what your range is going to be, right? Because you don't want to go out there with a 5 to 30 by 50 rifle scope when you know you're shooting 50 yards. Right, you go with a one power, you might go with a three X, uh, three power rifle scope. You want to go with something that's going to give you some semblance of a field of view when you're shooting at closer range. So, I would tell people, you know, don't just pull something out of your safe or off of a rifle and put it on your, your air rifle, but make a conscious decision, an optic uh, buying decision um, that is purpose driven. You know, it's going to go on an air rifle, you know, this is going to be your average range, probably. 50, 75 yards. Mm -hmm. So you know you want a lower base magnification for that rifle scope. Um, you don't need a 50 millimeter objective lens. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna hunt at night, is, is your help for night hunting gonna come from that optic or is it gonna come from an amount, a mounted illuminator, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's a red and green light or IR illuminator because you're running with a night vision device. I mean, all these things are tied into what type of optic you're going to buy and run on on your air rifle. All of it's purpose driven. So step number one is figure out what you're going to use that air rifle system for. So, what um, what do you guys? Uh, how many how many scopes right now do you guys have in your lineup um, on the on the thermal and night vision side that people can choose from? <laughs> On the digital night vision side, um, on the on the sight mark side, we have the sight mark wraith. Uh, we have the um, we just introduced the the two X. It's a uh, two to eighteen, and then of course we also have the four um, the four X or the four to thirty two. Um, both of those are great. I mean, they're they're designed for twenty hour, twenty four hour hunting. So we have those two scopes there. On the Pulsar side, we have digital night vision and we have thermal imaging. So on the digital night vision side, we have two lines of scopes that we offer right now, which is the Digistite Ultra and the Digex. And both of those are gonna have detection ranges somewhere in the, in the realm of 600 yards. So you're talking about uh, Gen 3 level digital night vision performance if you're going to apply it to a traditional night vision rating. Um, like Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3. So it's on par with Gen 3. It's a very long detection range, more than probably most people are ever going to use. Mm -hmm. um, and the price points are, gosh, uh, I'd have to look again, but I think somewhere between, say, $1,200, $1,600. Or, uh, $1 uh, the Wraith is about five to $600, but the Digisite Ultra and the Digex run about, I think, twelve to $1,600. Um, thermal, a little bit different story. Thermal is not night vision. Thermal is thermal. Technology is completely different. Instead of casting out IR and bringing those light particles back in like night vision, digital night vision does, thermal sends uh, sensors out to detect uh, infrared radiation or heat and brings that information back and processes it into an image on your display, right? So a thermal can do that without any light at all, right? Right. Of course, there's a cost associated with that. Uh, right now, thermal rifle scopes on our lines, we have the Pulsar core that runs about uh, two grand, I think. Um, you probably find them for about 1900. That's a dedicated thermal rifle scope with the 384 core sensor and 17 micron pixel pitch. Right. Uh, and then we have, uh, aside from the core, we have a core Ford adapter. Uh, that's on a 384 sensor um, and I don't know the price points, probably 3,500 to 4,500 for the core Ford adapters. Um, use your rifle's reticle and magnification range. And literally that thermal imager uh, attaches to the front of your, your traditional rifle scope, right? Um, most people are going to opt for dedicated rifle scopes, a little bit higher range, which is our trail and our uh, thermions. And so the trails and the thermions are separated into two groups, um, XQ groups and XP. So the XQs are gonna run 3D4 sensors and the XPs are gonna run 
640 sensors. The one that everybody's after right now, especially for image clarity, um, high resolution imaging, that's a 640 sensor. Um, and those, those are gonna run the, the XP50 or XP38 and XP50s are generally gonna run between uh, say probably $4,500, $6,500 for a thermal rifle scope. Um, and the XQs are probably going to run between, say, um, $3,000, $4,500 for the 3D4 sensors. So there's a little bit of a variance there. Now, 10 years ago, that stuff was like $20,000. Right. I mean, it was stupid expensive. When I was in the Marine Corps many, many, many moons ago, we knew we had thermal, but none of us had ever seen thermal. It was really kind of a unicorn. And so now it's thermal is pretty much everywhere. I mean, we've got contractors using them to troubleshoot, you know, how, you know, stuff in houses, insulation issues, electrical issues, first responders use them for search and recovery. Police are using them to catch bad guys that are trying to hide in the woods. Um, you know, so there are all these different applications. Thermal's all around us, and the price point has dropped significantly. Instead of twenty or thirty thousand dollars, now you can get a thermal rifle scope for under two grand. Right. I mean, I've got day scopes that cost more than that. Fair enough. Fair enough. 